I think it's look. It's, it's been a, uh, a very challenging season for the team. It's uh, with a new coaching staff and under a, a fair bit of pressure after receiving two wooden spoons in uh, that one in 13, one in 2012. I, I, I think, to be honest, I, I think it's been a good season for the Eels. We've won 11 games so far. Uh, last season we were only able to win five. I think it was only six the year before that. So. There's certainly been some improvement in the way they've performed, the way they've played. But what the biggest thing for me has been is the, the number of young players that have come through and have really started to cement themselves in, in the first grade team and, and in the NRL. Guys like Paulie Paulie, Junior Paulo. I think Joseph Paulo has been outstanding. While he's not a young guy, he's been around for a little while. He's really developed into a, a bit of a leader. Uh, Jared Haynes playing some outstanding footy. We've had a, another young player, Tepai Moroa, make his debut. So. Quite a few of these young players are coming through. Beretta Faramos made his debut as well. Um, I, I think they're all going well, but it's our senior players that have really, really taken control of the team. And that's obviously come from the, the, the way that Brad Arthur coaches and the way that he's looking at developing and building his team. Yeah, I think so. I think Brad has come into the club and really been very, very honest with the boys and he's, he's not uh, backwards in revealing what he, he wants to see from them. He's very, uh, very straightforward. Uh, doesn't really come up, or well, doesn't really expect the players to come up with these outlandish plays, but what he does expect, he expects to get them to give his, their best every training session and every game. It's the type of coach that he is. He works very, very hard. Uh, he's you know, right up there with, with some of the guys that have, have coached in the past in, at Parramatta in, in Brian Smith, who's probably one of the hardest working coaches that I've ever uh, come across. Very, very uh, experienced and um, very, very professional. So what Brad's instilled is that, that hard work, that, that belief and um, not being satisfied with uh, mediocrity. In talking to the players in the team, they really have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he's uh, very, very honest in what he uh, he expects from the players, but he doesn't expect them to do things that he knows are out of their skill set or out of their level, if if, uh, if that's the way to put it. So I think he's got the team going going very well, and what he has done is been able to bring up uh, those young guys, as I mentioned earlier. He's been able to bring them them through. It's uh, it's always pretty tough to bring up a, a number of young guys and bring them all up together, but. Uh, they're just playing with a lot of confidence. I think their defence has been outstanding this year. Uh, they've had to defend for long periods on their try line. I think the, uh, the best example of that was against the Roosters earlier this year here at Parramatta Stadium. They defended for pretty much the whole second half. The Roosters were hammering away at their line and Jared Hayne was able to hold up Sonny Bill Williams in the last minute. So that was um, probably the highlight. Uh, they defended well again on the weekend and that's what Brad has built this team around is the way they defend and the way they're really controlling the ruck and they're also playing some, some great footy as well using the, using the ball, uh, not just content with you know, getting field position and, and grinding a team out, they're really asking a lot of questions of the opposition defence and uh, they've played some really, really good football uh, and, and been able to, to build on that confidence. When I finished playing rugby league, when I, when I retired, I, I certainly had no interest to, uh, to go into the coaching ranks, uh, but the longer I was out of the, out of the game, the, the more I felt that there was something missing. So I thought I'd just uh, give it a bit of a go, dip the toe in the water and do some work with our junior rep sides. And I certainly found what I was missing, being around the team, being around the team environment in the dressing rooms and, and that feeling you, you get after a win and, and being at training with the boys and hearing the stories and the jokes and the, you know, the, all the larrikins coming out and everyone sort of uh, putting a bit of, uh, bit of heat or, or taking, uh, taking the piss out of each other. That's, that's the thing that I miss the most. Uh, so that really filled that void for me. Oh no, you know those uh, individual accolades, you don't really play the game for that. You, you play to not let your teammates down, and that's uh, it's a big part of big part of sport. Uh, being involved in the team, uh, it's been outstanding. Uh, you try and work as hard as you can for your teammates and not to let them down. So those uh, those individual awards are very nice. It's a huge honour. There's uh, certainly some wonderful players in that: Peter Sterling, Ray Price, Mick Cronin, 
Mick Crona was crowned the, the champion of Parramatta, which is the next level after a Hall of Famer. So it was a, it was a wonderful night, a huge honour, uh, quite overwhelming to be honest. We had the whole, well, we had the current team there, and we had a lot of our sponsors there. We had a crowd of about 500 people. So it's um, it's uh, it's one of those things that that really nice, I suppose. As you get a bit older, you start to appreciate and you know, realise how special those things are. Oh, I think it's been great. I think it's been a, a wonderful story. I've gotten to know uh, Phil and Louie and the rest of the staff there they're very well and very closely. They've done quite a fair bit of work together. I think the exposure has been great. The exposure we've generated has been a lot better than last year. Last year was the, the first season on. This year we're obviously going quite a, a bit better. There's a few things that we still need to work on, but it's like any relationship. It uh, needs continual improvement, needs, needs to be worked on and needs to, look at, needs to be looked at and reviewed and, and that's constant. You know, you can't be satisfied. It's like when you go back to sport, you can't ever be satisfied with the game or satisfied with the result. You're always trying to look at new ways to do things and uh, new ways to generate a bit more exposure or new ways to generate a bit more, uh, a bit more business. So uh, we've got quite a few of our other partners who are starting to ask and starting to talk about the guys at Content Security and what they do and the network, business networking opportunities that we have and those sort of nights where we've had uh, one of the staff members there, Ryan Hitchin, come out and do a bit of a, a presentation to the rest of the group. We had a room of about 50 of our, our sponsors there, so it gives a, a better overview and it's just building on those little things, those meetings and getting to know our other partners and that's a big part of what we need to do. We need to make sure that our clients are receiving a great you know, a really good return on the investment and it's about building the, the partnership and the relationship. We're very confident that the exposure we generate as a team ranks right up there with the, the top NRL teams in the competition, that's for sure. Some of the signage stuff that we've done it has been really good. The branding on the back of the shorts is good but again it's about reviewing it and looking at doing things a little bit differently. We've, we've changed some of, the, uh, some of the stuff we've done on the LED system, looking at a bit of a modification of the logo for next season on the shorts just to provide that extra exposure and that's what it's all about.